Sholem Alechem. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom Alechem. All right, um, uh, some updates. The Bundist movement, or in full, the Jewish Bundist diaspora movement, has unfinished business. This movement will at some point most likely come to an end, but it's not over yet, and the website is going to stay up. What we um, will be publishing is a manifesto. Now, there's been too many setbacks for this. The setbacks will not be forever. But this manifesto, everybody has written um, for it. The the the, the five late mar- um, the five late members of the Bundist movement have written for it. Donna Newman has written for it, and I have written for it. Um, I had found them. I had found all the PDFs for it, and then I lost them again. And I will refine them again because I have to. You know, I have them all on different USBs. And when I get these uh, to Dr. Weisfeld, he's um, supposed to put some commentary in it, and then we will be able to put out this manifesto. And the ultimate purpose of that is that uh, Bundism has been in need of serious upgrade, and we believe uh, we hold with great conviction that we did upgrade. We did upgrade. Uh, we did upgrade um, Bundism. Now, before I used to refer to Bundism as a methodology as opposed to an ideology. And one time, and I cannot remember when, uh, Dr. Weisfeld actually said, uh, "Why not refer to it as an ideological methodology?" And yeah, he was correct. Bundism is actually an ideological methodology rather than just a methodology or saying it's an ideology. That would be the correct term. Because there is something very ideological to uh, to, uh, Bundism, but it is more of a methodology. Especially if we're taking uh, whatever we can uh, find logical for what we're doing from both anarchism and Marxism as well as other tendencies. So tendencies not like no more like more like uh, ideologies anyway uh, I don't want to rant today's video is gonna deal with something that I, I wanted to get to before but I'm having serious computer problems uh, as I've had some upgrades for computers thinking that this would make things better it actually made things worse and that's not because I mean, I have to adjust sound. I'm sure you can tell the audio co- uh, quality here is not very good. Yet, I do have the responsibility to put stuff out. I am your host, Comrade Net. Comrade Net, uh, my title is the Cleric of Public Relations for the Bundist Movement. I work with Dr. Abram Weisfeld, the chairman of the revolution. That is his title for the Bundist Movement. And uh, I work with Donna Newman, Emissary of Solidarity, which is her title for the Bundist movement, and she is mostly incapacitate, incapacitated due to the two strokes she had last year. Anyway, uh, there's th- this video, I don't know what you would really call this video that I'm about to present to you, but the events out here, uh, the, the events in this video happened out here in Arizona, in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, what you're about to see took place um, it, it took place uh, at, a, at a gas station. Um, the gas station called S- Super Pumper. Uh, this video was put out by Greg Cam. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is the video, uh, the original footage from Greg Cam. Now, um, I'm not really sure the exact date that this uh, altercation took place, although... I would place it around something like uh, June 7, 2020, or June 8, 2020. Now, um, th- this is really all part of the reality in Phoenix, Arizona. 
what you're about to see here. Uh, this kind of thing is not unique, though, to Arizona at all. But but it is a side that uh, the metropolitan area likes to pretend does not exist. So without further ado, I give you this video, um, you know, the racist gas station altercation on cam. It was put out by Greg Cam. Again, I'm not exactly sure when it came out, and I'm a little late giving this to you. Um, it, it, it either came, I'm, I'm guessing it came out somewhere from, it was very, very recent. It was somewhere around uh, June 7, 2020 or June 8, 2020. And for, forgive me for not having the exact date. So uh, here's the video. Oh, I said no. she is, and that's why she's leaving. No, okay. So you will leave too. No, 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 no. This is going all on the internet. You don't know who I am. You told her to, you told her to go back to her country where she's from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where were you born? I was born in America. Where are your ancestors from? They're not from this country. You're going back to Mexico. You better go back you to where you're from. You just, you just no, you just walked into it. Excuse me. Oh, oh, wow. oh my See? god. Yeah, Ladies? you deserved it. Oh my god. In my opinion. Yeah, you you pushed her and she smacked you. That was uh, self defense on her part. No, she grabbed me. For extra perspective on what uh, you just saw, I'm going to uh, provide now something from the local news out here in Arizona, uh, from Channel uh, 12 News, which is run by NBC. And to be clear, the Bundist movement does not endorse NBC. In fact, we do not endorse the local Arizona stations. Because they could do far better than they do. But they don't. So this is not an endorsement. But by the rules of fair use, it's perfectly permissible what I'm doing. Uh, this video called Caught on Camera Confrontation Over Racist Comments in Phoenix Gas Station, uh, published June 8, 2020. Ending tonight, an altercation turning violent at a Phoenix gas station over the weekend over alleged racism. Video inside the Super Pumper gas station shows a woman loudly asking others to leave the store after telling a clerk not to serve a couple. The woman, identified as Tamara Harrian of Glendale, can be heard asking the younger woman where she was born and appearing to grab her before the young girl slaps her back across the face. Now Harrian's husband, Robert Harrian, is apologizing for his wife's actions, saying that she struggles with mental health problems. 12 News spoke with Greg Kahn, the man who posted this video, who says he shared it to bring awareness and stand up for what's right. Record it, record, 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 and document anything you see that is, is racist towards somebody else. I mean, this is the time where we need to speak up, especially as a Caucasian people, to speak up and, and, and help, help the situation at hand, not make it worse, and definitely not stay silent. Let's go back to this video. In it, Tamara Harrian identifies herself as a store manager, which is not true. She is in no way, in fact, affiliated with Super Pumper and has never worked there. In an email, Super Pumper owner Merrick Frederick said she's been banned from all locations and Super Pumper does not condone any type of hate speech. We'll have more on this story for you tonight at 10. Now, this next video on the same subject is called Viral Video Shows, quote, Karen getting slapped for racist remarks. Uh, now, this one is put out by CBS 17, another local station. Uh, it was published on June 9, 2020. Just like before, this local news is also not endorsed by the Buddhist movement, and the justification for using it is fair use. And it just happens to be a topic that we are known for talking about. So, I'm within my rights for showing this. As this is a subject close to us and close to what we deal with and what we've been trying to show a lot of people and so you know we have avoided using the local news whenever there's something of interest that actually does show up uh you know and i, I guess after a lot of crap that happened you know recently last year you know who cares this was within our rights to show this this came out uh this was published uh on june 9th 2020 by CBS 17. 
Again, the, the video is titled uh, Viral Video Shows Karen Getting Slapped for Racist Remarks. Are you the manager? Greg Hahn, the man behind this now viral video, talks about the moment three lives collided inside this gas station on 7th Street near Bell Road in Phoenix. Five seconds after I was checking out, this lady walks in and was all upset that her pump wasn't working and there was a line in the gas station so she started yelling at the clerk to go get another uh, clerk to come out. He says he starts recording as this woman starts arguing with another customer and out of nowhere making it about race. And the lady just went off on her, told her that she worked there, that told the cashier not to serve her and that she can go back to her country. You did say that she needs to go back to her country. What, what kind this of, what kind country. of, what is that? Native Americans Excuse me, this is what this whole world... People are not from this country. She then directs her anger towards Greg and his camera. You need to leave, you're not no, a part no, no, of this. No, no. Surveillance video given to us by Super Pumper shows as the woman continues to walk toward the couple pointing her finger, even pushing the man in his shoulder while his hands are in his pockets. That's a yeah. Know that, right? yeah, yeah. After that, the argument escalates. And then that's when the lady pushes Karina and the lady actually hits her right there. Yeah, you deserved it. The video has been shared thousands of times and the woman's husband says his law firm is now the target of harassment. All I can tell you is, is my wife has, has gone and has been going through a mental crisis. He says following this incident, his wife is undergoing an intervention. And I love her dearly. And it's, it's not who she is. And I just want everyone to know how sorry I am. The lady that, that had the altercation, I'm so sorry. I don't know her name. I don't know how to reach her, but I just want to share with her that I'm just so sorry that all that happened. In the meantime, Super Pumper has decided to ban the woman from all 13 other stores in the state. In Phoenix, Monica Garcia with Arizona's family. And now this next one is called, I was appalled at the behavior she was displaying. Woman harassed at Phoenix gas station speaks up. This video was published June 9th, 2020. Again, June 9th, 2020. You can hear me. I mean, bad sound quality, and I do apologize. This came from 12 News. Again, that's owned by NBC, and we don't endorse that local station, but under the rules of uh, fair use, uh, we are within our rights to put this out. Well, it's the video making the rounds right now on social media. A woman on a racist tirade at a local gas station. Team 12's Rachel Cole brings us details from the victim's perspective after being screamed at and asked to leave. Hey there, Karina, the woman seen being harassed in the video who innocently popped into the Super Pumper gas station is now talking about what went down in that viral video. Where were you born? I was born in America. Where are your ancestors from? She saw she saw a bunch of people of color that she didn't like and and she decided to come for us in the facebook video captured by greg khan another customer you can see tamra in black and white screaming at karina you better go back you to where you're from you just, you just no you just walked into her excuse me oh my god it hurt my feelings for other people that can't protect or defend themselves. You're going back to that Karina, who was born in the United States, says this kind of hatred is part of the present problem. Honestly, I was just appalled at the behavior that she was displaying. Um, she came in immediately acting like she was above everybody else. At one point, Tamara seems to claim she works at the convenience store. Her husband, Bob, has since apologized for her actions. Horrible things were said, and a lot of those horrible things came from my wife. But it came from a spot of, a, of, a, of an illness that I've been trying to help and, and fix for a long time. Karina is hopeful her physical encounter will help enlighten others to be kind and courteous, no matter the circumstance. And I just want to be the motion that, that moves forward and like um, just shows our generation that that we can't stand for this, that, we, that we, sh we should be better than they are, that they were. We should realize our faults and um, within ourselves and 
work forward to make ourselves and our world and our country better. Rachel Cole, 12 News. Mrs. Harian said, said by some to be the co-owner of Harian Law Firm in uh, Glendale, Arizona. It does look like that is the case as I research this. Now, her husband, that being the, you know, the gray-haired dude with the mustache, uh, this is uh, Robert F. Heron. Now, uh, his a crying, I just want to say that his crying appeared to me to be rather tearless. So I'm not sure how much I buy it, and I don't really feel, or I'm going to be honest, I feel absolutely no sympathy, and I hope that law firm goes down. I'm getting tired of my self-censorship, that, you know, whatever. As I have to deal with a lot of this all the time, watch this right before my eyes. And then you hear people say that, oh, this stuff doesn't happen. It happens every day. It just so happens that now the media is trying to pay attention to it because they know that that's what's going to keep them relevant in the eyes of the world. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, this is a uh, Harian. You know, she said by some to be the co over the co owner of a Harian law firm, and um, it does look like that's the case. It's a law firm in uh, Glendale, Arizona. Now, I have confirmed that uh, our local media is being truthful that uh, Mrs. Harian is n not the gas station owner, and that she has been banned from all of the super pumpers in Arizona. Now, I really don't know if the lady uh, who slapped uh, Mrs. Harian, uh, you know, that being the that being uh, the, the I believe uh, the the uh, person who is said to be Mexican, which there's no clarification that she's Mexican. Um, but uh, this this lady, the lady, the basically the lady who slapped the white racist, you know, the one who actually slapped her in retaliation. That is, um. I have no idea whether she's Mexican or not, but that does bring up an important point. I feel it necessary to remind everyone that Mexicans are Native Americans, and that also European, European citizens of Mexico are not Mexican. Here in Arizona, And we don't understand often that here in Arizona, there's a the, all of the scars are very visible for us to see. These scars, we call this, there's a word for it, a correct term for this. The scars that we see in Arizona, the scars of Arizona, can only be referred to as cultural genocide. The fact that Mexicans are central Native Americans, and yet many of them have been brainwashed into calling themselves Latino or Hispanic, and that... European citizens of uh, the Mexican state are referred to as Mexican when they're Europeans. That just shows you how far the cultural genocide has gone. It's an ongoing physical genocide and cultural genocide. That's one of the reasons why this is so important. You heard the white racist, you know, that, that being Mrs. Harian, she says, go back to Mexico even though she is a European immigrant. So, the woman, I believe her name was Katrina, uh, I, I think, I think that was her name. Uh, she's Native American. Maybe she is Mexican, maybe she is not. However, being Mexican does not disqualify being Native American. In fact, Mexicans are Native American. Now, there are, of course, as I said before, the European citizens of Mexico who are not Mexicans. They're just Europeans. What I say shouldn't be controversial, but it is, which shows that the racism never stopped. The United States racism, in fact, is on the rise and will most likely soon surpass what we saw with Jim Crow and Jane Crow. And we don't have room for the optimism that the fascists want us to have, because that keeps us quiet and asleep and complacent. Anyway, I'm not going to edit this video 
any further. I'm not going to filter the rage that I feel over all of this. But what I will do is I'm going to close this video with something very special, with the love, with the, with a special presentation for everyone. I'm going to close this video with a message from the chairman of the revolution for the Bundist movement. This video was published by our chairman himself, Dr. Weisfeld. He published this video on June 7, 2020. This video is called Joint Declaration of Support and Solidarity for Anti-Racism Revolt. This is uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld speaking in France and presenting the declaration that has been composed by various collectives on an international scale. This is a joint declaration of support and solidarity for anti-racism revolt. Hello, comrades and siblings from around the globe. This is a message of support and solidarity from several unified collectives and individuals of ethnically diverse international socialists and progressives of faith, inspired by the Abrahamic religions to work together for a better world. Recently, the ongoing issue of racist violence and police lynchings has resurfaced in the international public consciousness, sparked by the extra juridical murders of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Ahmaud Arbery in Georgia, Drijon Sean Reed in Minneapolis, and Breonna Taylor of Louisville at the hands of white militants and police. This form of violence has been ongoing since the onset of colonialism and chattel slavery over 500 years ago. Despite the attempts of the white supremacist ruling class to conceal this issue, public awareness has become more widespread thanks to technology and the efforts of black activists and their allies to bring attention to this issue. As socialists and progressives, we are called to address the inequities of civilization. As people of faith, we are called to fight for our justice, uphold the God-given rights of all peoples, and safeguard the vulnerable. Through slavery, Jim Crow laws, voter suppression, economic inequality, educational inequalities, to systematic violence, the white supremacist ruling class has long subjected black and brown people on an international level. Black America has never been treated equitably by white European America. In a nation where, according to the Washington Post's official counter, approximately 1,252 black people have been shot by police since the 1st of January 2015. How can any black person be safe? The anti-black violence happening in America and throughout the world is inexorably linked to other acts of racist, ethnocentric, and intolerant terrorism committed by white oppressors throughout the world, such as the recent anti-Semitic massacres of synagogues in America and Germany, the anti-Muslim attacks on a Majid in New Zealand, the killings and imprisonment of Latin American refugees at the American border, the ongoing disappearings, sexual assaults, and murders of the indigenous people of the Americas, the anti-Semitic police killings in Phoenix, Arizona, the ongoing lethal occupation of Palestine at the hands of the Zionist occupation, the multinational attacks on Kurds, as well as countless other atrocities. <coughs> Protesters taking to the streets in order to promote justice and fight inequality are also targeted by racist violence. A number of protesters have been intentionally hit by cars and in some cases have died. Police and white militants have also assaulted and killed a number of protesters throughout the United States. In Seattle, the city government instructed police officers to turn off their body cameras to conceal the use of deadly force. As the violence escalates towards black and brown people, the politicians and media largely condemn the fight for justice and try to suppress public knowledge of these attacks. President Trump threatened on Twitter, Facebook, and a public address inside the White House Rose Garden to have protesters killed. The National Guard has been activated to suppress the movement for justice, a lethal tactic historically used to further militant and state-sanctioned oppression in the United States and abroad. 
Support from people throughout the world is needed in order to help save the lives of oppressed people struggling for liberation. As people of faith and members of a prophetic, revolutionary, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim movement that spans many ages and all continents, we are inspired by the example of Moses, who organized his people to rise up against the ruling class of slave owners led by Pharaoh. We are inspired by Elijah, who called his people to rise up against the dictator Achshav and his ideologues, who were the prophets of Baal. We were inspired by Jesus, who rioted against the commercial elite in the temple and against the Roman Empire that occupied Palestine. We are inspired by Mohammed, who organized his comrades and the oppressed and exploited masses of the Arabian Peninsula to rise up against the power of the ruling Kusari Shi elite. Just as the prophets rebelled against the idolatrous law of their age, the worshipping of rulers as gods, the propaganda portraying, portraying the hierarchy of society as divinely ordained, the justification of oppression and slavery by calling it the will of the gods, so we must too call out the idolatry of today. The worship of wealth and power, the veneration of banks and stock exchanges, the seemingly almighty status of financial institutions. These are the modern equivalents of the kings and slave lords that the prophets rose up against. And in accordance with their example, we must continue this hallowed Abrahamic tradition and fight against oppression and injustice in our time and place. Our Creator calls us to fight injustice and inequality and to protect human life. As socialists and progressives, who strive to create a world which protects the inherent rights and freedoms bestowed by our Creator's mercy upon us all, we have an obligation to support the fight for justice and liberty for black and brown people in the United States of America and across the globe. We must do all we can to support and further the struggle for racial justice until all racialized people are free from all forms of imperialistic colonial oppression. We are at our strongest when united in love and in the pursuit of justice. Our prayers, our support, and our solidarity in every way possible are with the people of color in America and across the world. Our collective stand with racialized people in America and throughout the world. Black Lives Matter. This declaration is available in other languages in Deutsch, Espanol, Francais, Italiano, and Nederlandish. There is a list of collectives and individuals who have endorsed this joint declaration, which is found at the uh, website address, which is, without any spaces, I announce the address as being Joint Solidarity Message 2020.noblogs Dot org. I can also read to you the uh, names of the collectives which have endorsed this joint declaration. The Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians, Black Dawa Network, Compassion Centered Islam Network, Jewish Bundes Diaspora Movement, JPLO, the Jewish People's Liberation Organization, Mecca Institute, Nuova Resistenza, the El Tawhid Unity Mosque, Toronto, Canada, the online communities of the ESCA Tological Postings, Progressive Muslims Facebook community, Jewish Comrades for Socialism, Muslims for Socialism, Rebuild Christians for Socialism, and a number of individuals, Alejandro Manzano from Mexico, Bach Jonkers, Belgium, Imam Dair Abdullah, United States of America, Jules Espijo, Canada, Kevin Morgan, Canada, Red, Swar Red Wars Wasp, or Corneille Larno in Belgium. Thanking you for your attention and directing you to the websites to be able to copy and share this declaration to make us all stronger. Thanking you very much for hearing us today. 
And I would reiterate that in order to uh, be liberated, one must struggle to be victorious over th our various oppressions. Thanking you again. Bye for now.